three old women called Elena Yo, Kata, and Dorothea, and a young man called Fitzko. Fitzko is a very interesting character, and he seems to have been a kind of factotum, a kind of jack of all trades, who carried out uh, perhaps all of Elizabeth's dirty work. Fitzko and the old ladies were not only responsible for the day-to-day -day running of the castle at Chachtiche, but also the recruitment of girls from the outlying villages to work as Elizabeth's servants. It's hard for us to imagine that anyone would willingly go and work in a household if there had been rumors of even one girl dying. But the situation for many people in Hungary at that time was so desperate. The only way to guarantee a living wage would be to virtually sell your children into servitude in the great house. And that's exactly what happened. At the tower, the girls were undressed and showered down and then she would look at them and she'd pick out the ones that she wanted to torture. If somebody was too skinny and too pale, she didn't like them at all because they didn't last very long under the torture. She liked the buxom ones, the big ones, because they lasted longer. Trivial offences were punished in the most extreme ways. One girl from the village beneath the castle was accused of stealing money from the household coffers. It was claimed at her trial that Elizabeth heated a coin over a candle until it was white hot, then pressed it into the girl's hand. Elizabeth didn't confine her particular brand of domestic discipline to Hungary. On several occasions during her life, she was in Vienna to visit the court of the Austrian king, Matthias. Despite protests, she tortured servant girls here at her house in Augustinastrasse. And we have the accounts of the monks from the Augustiner monastery across the street. They heard the noises of these girls the torture sounds. So they threw their pots against the, the windows. But there was nothing they could do about it because she was a powerful woman. These scenarios were repeated at several of her castles, including this one at Lockenhaus on the Austrian border, a fortress belonging to her husband's family, the Nadasdis. I don't think that they would have seen a distinction right up to the point of near death between um, disciplining and acting sadistically. They didn't have those distinctions. Excessive cruelty on the part of Hungarians to their lessers, the Slovaks, was very common at the time. In this case, she carried it too far. I think she had a compulsion to torture and eventually to kill. There's been a need throughout our cultural history to have great mythical icons of female evil. Elizabeth Bathory, in due course, was taken up to represent this figure. The bloodiness of her myth and the bloodiness of the events ascribed to her are typical of medieval and post-medieval European imagination. Even the birth of her own children, the last of four appearing in 1598, seems to have done little to foster any sympathy for her servant girl. I think that's what makes her doubly shocking. She seems to have been a caring, loving mother type to her own children, who of course were Hungarians, obviously, and not Slovak. The traditional view of the woman is kind of violated when you have somebody, especially, who's torturing young girls. This abuse of her Slovak peasants would become markedly more extreme. The catalyst for this was the death of her husband in 1604. As soon as a woman was widowed, all her family 
and all her neighbors and all the other competing families would be after her to strip her of that wealth by legal means or by simply occupying her lands, defrauding her, uh, accusing her perhaps of false crimes in order to take away her property. And there was no way that a woman could resist this, even a woman as powerful as Elizabeth. Suddenly, Elizabeth's vast estates were threatened. Feeling vulnerable, she reacted as only she could. You discipline, you over-discipline. It's a very logical way to react if you feel that things are getting out of control. The disciplining becomes cruelty, becomes abuse. At Chachtiche, one of her few remaining castles, that abuse would escalate to the point where Elizabeth Bathory would become a mass murderer. By 1604, the now widowed Elizabeth Bathory, a powerful and wealthy Hungarian countess, had for years been cruelly torturing her female servants at her mountaintop castle at Chachtice, in what is now modern Slovakia. Her sadistic reputation was beginning to strike fear into the hearts of all who heard her name. You must imagine these people cowering outside the walls of her castles, never knowing what exactly is going on in there, but knowing at the same time that they are absolutely subject to this person's power, to this person's whims. Before her husband's death, Elizabeth had been abusing her servants in order to discipline them. This eventually escalated to murder. According to the documents from her trial in 1611, it was estimated that she killed almost 650 young girls. There are two reasons for what she did. One of them has to do with her own mindset. She thought she was just disciplining her servants. But the other has to do with just getting old and jealousy about the beauty of these girls. She's in her 40s when she was fading. Elizabeth Bate was very obsessed with her own looks. She used to have a mirror 